I put that old Batman TV yeah. show. Yeah, I didn't think that was so cool. Because when Batman fought, those words <laughs> would go from there and compile. Boom. Yeah, you guys might not believe this, but one time I got in a fight, and the guy was beating me up real bad. And I saw those words, man. <laughs> Yeah, but you don't be a real good fight. I would love to see Batman fight crime in my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. He'd be like, Robin. Yes, Batman. Then we park the car right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man, I love Montreal. I do, man. Yeah, man, I was hanging out in the black community today. Both of those guys are great. <laughs> we got along. I got lost today in Montreal. The police helped me find my way. The police helped me. See, I just got back from Los Angeles. Let me tell you something, LAPD overreact to everything. You ever see him in action? Just, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Stop jaywalking. <laughs> it's like real racially tense out there. I took two white friends of mine to an all black party in LA. These guys were in shock. They had no idea that black people sometimes call each other nigger as an endearing term. And they saw the brothers at the party like, hey, what up, nigga? <laughs> my man. <laughs> like, oh, what's up, nigga? Pat, pat. My white friends, they got all excited. Hey, how you niggers doing? <laughs> the music stopped. Everyone looked at them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, they got their asses kicked that night. <laughs> I hated to do it, but you understand. It was like, <laughs> they embarrassed me in those days. Me and one of the guys, this is real ironic, we got in like a little Rodney King incident ourselves. Me and this guy Dave, we were eating dinner at a restaurant. Dave got in an argument over the check with the waiter. Next thing we know, the owner, the manager, all the employees get together and just beat the shit out of him, kapow! He sued him for half a million dollars and won the case because the whole incident was recorded on videotape. Sounds amazing, right? Mm -mm. That's why me and my buddy Dave always carry a camcorder with us. Because you never know when a Kodak moment might pop up, you know. We'll be hanging out and be like, all right, Dave, go ahead, I got you. You ready, man? Go ahead, do it. I just be ready. Hey! Officer! Kiss my ass! What? Uh, uh oh. Roll them. <laughs> All the police problems in the States, man, it makes me wish superheroes existed. Normally, I hate superheroes. Not because they never help out black people. Mm -mm. <laughs> I think they're bad role models for children. You know, just look at them. Look at Wonder Woman. Look at how she dresses. You know, those big ass red hooker boots. Blue underwear with stars and stuff all over them. They always give women ridiculous weapons. One woman has a golden lasso that makes you tell the truth. Oh, not that. <laughs> the hell is that gonna do? She's gonna catch a bad guy. Gotcha. Oh, nice tits. <laughs> Superheroes never fight crime in black neighborhoods. No, I would love to see Batman in a black neighborhood. I can see him now, he just... Robin. Yes, Batman. <laughs> Didn't we park the car right here, man? <laughs> uh -huh. 
having such a wonderful time. You know, folks, any of you guys ever do this? I got a little trouble when I was coming into Montreal. I walked through that little x-ray thing at the airport and said a joke about having a gun. <laughs> Don't do that, y'all. <laughs> now, I was just trying to be funny. You know, I walked through the thing, it said boop, boop, boop. He said, I'm sorry, eh, but you have to go back through. I said, oh, no problem. Must have been my pistol. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey, I was joking. I mean, he was ready to kill me, man. Pulled his gun out and stick out all that shit. But my buddy Dave had the camera roll. <laughs> Very good to be here tonight, man. I, I almost didn't make it. I just got back in the country. I was in France. I didn't even mean to go to France. Actually, I was in Algeria in Africa, and my plane got hijacked. You might have seen it on the news. Very horrifying experience. Everyone on the plane was scared, except for myself. I was not, you know, relaxed because I'm a real brave guy. I'm not brave at all. I just know the facts. And the facts clearly state that a terrorist has never taken a black hostage <laughs> in the history of the world. <laughs> yes, my friends, it's the truth. You will never see one of us on the news reading one of those letters. <laughs> They is treating us good. We all just chilling. Because mm -mm. terrorists know what they're doing. I hate to say it. But black people are bad bargaining chips. <laughs> and terrorists would call up the White House, Hello! We have got five black people. And we will... Hello? <laughs> They ain't no leverage when they see it. You know, L.A., man, I just got here a few weeks ago. Very interesting city you guys have here. <laughs> I guess you like it. <laughs> I like it, too, man. I just got to get used to the pace of this place. I mean, I look like a real slow guy, but I like contrast. Speed turns me on. You guys stand on the escalator. That drives me crazy. Well, it's going up. <laughs> I can't walk around you or anything. And, and I, can't, I can't drive too good. I don't like driving anyway. And then, come to think of it, the first week I was here, they stole my car. <laughs> now, granted, it was a rental car, but it still hurt. <laughs> I had just put gas in it. I was very upset, but I figured it was no big deal. I bought the insurance. So I just called the rental car agency, and they sent me another one. The guy was nice on the phone. Ah, no problem, Mr. Chappelle. <laughs> We're going to upgrade you. We're sending you, hold on to your hat, a Lincoln town car. I said, wow, is that nice? Man, you're going to love it. <laughs> Any of you guys ever see a Lincoln Town car before? It looked like a big-ass pimp car. I was like, what is this? I couldn't even keep it in one lane. Oh, man. I felt like a pimp in that car. I did, man. I drove it down Sunset Boulevard. All the whores snapped to attention. <gasps> A lot of weird stuff happens here, man. You guys are on a roll with your natural disasters and riots and woo! This place is, I mean, it really fascinates. New York is bad, too. I live in New York now. New York's bad. <laughs> it's a lonely feeling, isn't it? <laughs> I know how you feel. It's, it's different, isn't it? New York is bad in a different kind of way. It's so dirty, man. The wildlife is dirty. You ever see a New York squirrel? I'm scared of squirrels because of them. They are just 
filthy. <laughs> Any of y'all know what squirrels are supposed to eat? Anybody? Nuts? That's what I thought. <laughs> you know what I saw a squirrel eating in New York? An egg McMuffin. <laughs> Is right. You didn't think they can find. They chew gum, they smoke old cigarettes. They're just, just foul animals, man. That whole city is crazy. I don't know. You ever notice, I don't know, like I see a couple kids in here. I don't know if you kids read comic books. You notice, though, most of the superheroes live in New York because we desperately need them. I mean, but I think New York is rubbing off on superheroes because they're all, like, very bad role models for children. I don't know if you've ever noticed that or not. Like, like look at Wonder Woman. You ever just take a good look at her? Look at her clothes. Tacky, tacky, tacky. <laughs> Big old red hooker boots and blue underwear with stars. What the hell is she dressed for? Look at the weapons they give a woman to fight with. A golden lasso. <laughs> That makes you tell the truth. <laughs> what is she gonna do with that? You know, just catch a bad guy. Gotcha! Oh. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything earlier, but this lasso just squeezed the truth right out of him. <laughs> Terrible thing. And I'm not just picking on the women either. I'm talking about all superheroes. Very stressful. Hang in there. <laughs> David Chappelle takes on Batman and Robin. Stay tuned. Can't stand superheroes. They're so prejudiced, too. You ever notice how prejudiced superheroes are? They only fight crime for the very rich. Think about it. You will never see Batman in the projects wasting his goddamn time. <laughs> I can see him there. He's just robbing. Yes, Batman. Didn't we park the car right here, man? What the hell happened? <laughs> Something about New York. New York diversified me, though. I learned a lot about culture there. I mean, I'm a big culture buff. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to point anybody. Anyone here in the audience Jewish? <laughs> Shalom something I picked up. Actually, I mean, I like everybody, but I'm gonna have to be honest. Jewish people are my favorite white people. <laughs> you guys are the only ones that can grow an afro if you really wanted to. I am <laughs> so impressed by that. I just like the whole thing, man, and you party like black people. You're so similar. I went to a bar mitzvah when I was 13. One of the three best parties I've been to in my life. We got Dan. I walked in there, everyone from school was there. The guy from ZZ Top was on stage. I said, man, <laughs> this is gonna be good. <laughs> you know, we walked in the synagogue and they gave us them party hats y'all wear. <laughs> I got a seat in the front. And my friend Charlie Buckholz, that's the guy who was being bar mitzvah, he walked on stage and that whole place got quiet. He picked up these two scrolls, started reading from them. He wasn't really reading, he was almost singing. Baruch Ataranoi. <laughs> Sounded beautiful. Now, I had never been to a synagogue before, but at a black church, if someone on stage is singing, <laughs> you're supposed to sing along. <laughs> Whether you know the words or not. <laughs> I did the best I could. <laughs> Then things really picked up. We all left the synagogue and went to this after party at the Hyatt. This is the fun part. There was all kinds of food, man, bagels and filthy fish. And we went in there. And I was wondering what kind of music they were gonna play. Now, let me tell you something. I don't know who this Havana Gila guy is, <laughs> but his album is slamming. They put that music on, the whole place just lit up. Everyone was dancing. I was breaking plates. Hey! 
Someone shouted out, Sparta. That's Greeks. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Wrong white people. But anyway, we were having a great time. I didn't even know it was a tradition. You're supposed to pick the person who's being bar mitzvah. You pick their mother up in a chair and dance around the party. I did not know that that was a tradition. I mean, I was just thinking, man. We are out of control tonight. <laughs> that was fun. It broadened my horizons, man. I mean, I was a very ignorant child. I didn't know a lot of things. Like when I was growing up, I don't want to offend anybody here. Let me check the exits. Okay, when I was growing up, I used to think that all white people, don't be mad. I thought all white people were happy. <laughs> just to be white. I know it sounds silly. I thought you just walked around. Hallelujah, I'm white. <laughs> this feels great. <laughs> Taxi. <laughs> just checking. Go ahead. What's up, San Francisco? <laughs> I like your city. It's beautiful. Tolerant place. I didn't see much. I haven't seen my friend call me. He was like, Dave. Having fun in Frisco? Hell yeah. Seen the sights? No. <laughs> you wanna go see Alcatraz? What kind of nigga in his right mind wants to visit a prison for recreation? <laughs> I got friends in jail I don't visit. <laughs> I don't deal with jails. Don't deal with jails and I don't deal with police. My house got robbed in New York. I didn't even call the police. I wanted to, but I couldn't. My crib is too nice. It's not that it's too nice, but it's too nice for me. <laughs> you know how the police are in New York. Soon as I open the door, they'll be like, oh, he's still here. <laughs> open and shut case, Johnson. <laughs> Apparently this black guy broke in and hung up pictures of his family everywhere. Never seen anything like it. Don't deal with them, man. I, I had to bail a friend of mine out of jail one time. You know, that was horrible. I was scared. I had to walk right into the belly of the beast. I tried to look as non-threatening as possible. Hi. I'm here to bail out my buddy. Oh, okay. Well, while you're here, you do fit a description. <laughs> if you walk this way, we can process you. <laughs> How they always get us. It's fitting those damn descriptions. <laughs> now, I could be bitter and blame all the police, but no. I'll tell you who I blame. It's those fucking sketch artists. <laughs> They keep drawing the same brother over and over again. Who is this generic man we all look like? I want to know what they say when it's us. You know what I mean? They'd be in that room like, did you get a look? Did you see the guy that tried to rob you? Yes. Yes, I did. He was about six feet tall, I'd say. Six. Feet tall? Yes. He had his hat on backwards, too. Good. That's good stuff. Hat was on backwards. Yes. He was black? Okay. Big lips, big nose, dick hanging out. Say no more, sir. I'll draw him from memory. You know, let me get my stencil. I think we can trace this guy and save some time. They get on the radio and shit, calling all cars, calling all cars. Be on the lookout for a black male between 4, 7, and 6, 8. <laughs> between 120 and 380 pounds. He's wearing Nikes. Get this man! This criminals are insane. I don't even know why people do crime. They want to catch you, they're going to catch you. They can. They got forensics. You ever seen forensics? Those guys find clues nobody else thinks about looking for. I mean it. 
you leave a pubic hair anywhere near a crime scene, they're gonna find that shit. What the, what the hell is this? Back up! We got a match. <laughs> then they look at the pubic and tell all kinds of information. Hmm, hmm. Looks like there was a struggle. Uh, <laughs> time of death, 307. <laughs> it's amazing. I saw him get a dude one time on court TV. It was embarrassing. It was, it was a sexual assault case. I knew the defendant was lying. I could feel it. He defended himself too hard. He did, his answers had nothing to do with the questions. They're completely irrelevant. They asked him easy questions. Were you anywhere near the crime scene on the night of the incident? Motherfucker, I told you I work at Burger King. He was like, <laughs> that went on for hours. Then the prosecutor got fed up. He said, I've had enough of this. Called the forensics to the stand. Forensics was like, Your Honor, we are prepared to testify that we found the defendant's semen under the stove. I said, God damn. That's worse than fingerprints. You know, they find your semen. You've been there at least a minute. But that's what I want to know. Under the stove, you find semen like that? Or do you look for it? <laughs> like, do they walk onto a crime scene like, this place is a mess. Check it for semen. <laughs> or do they just like walk in and slip? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> semen. <laughs> they find it on every crime scene. It's like, what are burglars doing? So we got the stuff, let's get out of here. Wait a minute. I want to leave my calling card. The semen bandit has struck again. <laughs> I don't understand nothing anymore. I don't. I watched TV the other day. Now tell me, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm crazy. Is it me? Is it me or do commercials have nothing to do with the products anymore? <laughs> you dig? I don't even know what a fucking commercial is about until the end. <laughs> Everyone's a surprise nowadays. You seen that commercial where the lady got the black eye? This lady come on TV with a black eye. She's crying. She's like, I smoke crack and my husband beats me and then a voice came on and said got milk I said, okay. <laughs> it has nothing to do with milk I'm not saying I'm a commercial expert but I'll make a better milk commercial than that just make it nice and simple I just do a close up of a titty and put milk right underneath if that doesn't sell milk Nothing will, boy. I'll tell you that shit right now. It's 1997. Titties are industry in 1997. They are. I know they are. I'm a customer. I went to a titty bar last week at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, that's bad. That is bad. Because it wasn't like I was out. I said, let me, let me swing by the titty bar. No. No, I left my house specifically <laughs> to see some tits. <laughs> Can't judge me, there's breast in there. It's just what men do. If a guy runs up to you on the street, it's like, hey, hey, don't go in that building. There are naked girls showing their breast. Be like a white dude in a horror movie. I better investigate. <laughs> I'm gonna to wanna to see for myself. <laughs> Titty bar's a weird place. I'm not saying it's a good place to hang out. I, I go there every once in then. 
but it's a weird place. They got weird morality. One time I walked into the bars, all these guys coming in, right? Out of all these dudes, the bouncer picked me out the crowd, started yelling at me. Hey, 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 buddy, sir, sir, do you want to take your hat off? Huh? It's disrespectful to the ladies. Yeah, I can shove a 20 up her ass, but I better not have a hat on when I do it. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. Here you go, Bubbles. <laughs> Forgive me for the hat thing. You know why those bars are so popular now? It's because men don't know how to deal with women in reality. So sometimes we gotta take the fantasy road. The reality of the situation is very grim. <laughs> Stories higher than 